This week's episode of the Art Tactic Podcast is brought to you by Artbase. Are you managing an art collection or an artist studio or a gallery? Is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level? Well, Artbase is the right software to manage your art business. Artbase allows you to track your artworks and contacts in an easy-to-use, powerful database. Enter your data once, and you can use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and so much more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used on the cloud from any location on any device. So what are you waiting for? Go to artbase.com today to learn more. And be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount. Thanks for listening to the Art Tactic Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Green. Hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. Despite certain parts of the world dealing with COVID cases rising and lockdowns persisting, there are some very positive developments in other places, and one such place is actually Dubai, where Art Dubai occurred this past week in person. You know, very few art fairs have been in person this year, and Art Dubai is the most established thus far to have done so. So we wanted to chat with someone on this week's episode of the podcast who's on the ground in Dubai who attended the fair to hear their perspective on how the fair went and what it was like to attend a fair in person. There's been a lot of chatter the past few weeks, especially in the U.S. and the U.K., where the vaccine rollout is moving along at a good pace about the art fair schedule this year. And there's a lot of optimism as well as uncertainty about which fairs will actually occur. The big immediate test is Freeze New York, which is supposed to take place next month in early May. It's a condensed fair this year. There will be only about 50 galleries exhibiting, but I think it'll actually be well attended and I think there will be a lot of collectors, especially from around the U.S. who have been vaccinated but haven't traveled much, who will take this opportunity to travel for art for the first time in a year. And I think people are wondering how it will go and what the experience will be like, so perhaps we can learn something from how things went this past week in Dubai. So in this week's episode of the podcast, we chat with Rebecca Ann Proctor. She's an independent journalist based in Dubai who writes regularly for Artnet News and Arab News, among other publications. Rebecca covered Art Dubai, arguably the most established art fair to take place in person this year, so we're very excited to chat with Rebecca to get a sense of what the fair was like to attend in person. Thanks so much for listening. Rebecca, thanks so much for coming on. Well, thanks for having me, Adam. Of course, it's our pleasure. So before we jump into Art Dubai, I guess I want to take a step back and understand what the COVID situation is like in Dubai at the moment, because our listeners are in different places around the world, and COVID right now is impacting different locations very differently. So I think if we can get a better sense first of what COVID's like in Dubai, then we can really understand what an art fair can look like under those underlying COVID conditions, if that makes sense. So what is COVID like in Dubai at the moment? Well, we have a pretty, we have a pretty um, controlled situation. It's um, the numbers have really have dropped. They did, they did increase a bit over January and February when there was a surge of cases after, you know, Dubai opened its borders. Um, well, it, it opened its borders in January but then uh, restrictions were really relaxed over the holidays. So there was a lot of holiday makers, as, as um, many people might, might know, that flocked to Dubai to, to enjoy the festivities. And so we did see an increase around, I'd say, end of January and, and February. But these have gone down now, and the vaccination rollout is really second in the world, only to Israel. I mean, we've, the UAE has vaccinated now over half of its population. And uh, there's a lot of precautions in place. Um, the borders are open. People can come. Anybody can come to Dubai. Obviously, they have to, you know, uh, take a PCR test. Um, they have to abide by the various restrictions um, according to where they're, you know, they're coming. They're coming from. And um, but of course, the city is is open, and uh, you know, we have to wear the obligatory face mask. Um, abide by various different social distancing restrictions. For example, if you go to a restaurant at the moment, the biggest, um, you know, the largest amount of people that can be at one table is, uh, has been capped at seven. So the city is, you know, there's a good energy in the city and it's more or less gone back to normal apart from, you know, the obvious uh, 
the obvious uh, restrictions, health and safety protocols. Got it. Yeah, I think that gives us a much clearer idea as to what the situation's like in Dubai. So Art Dubai 2021, you attended the fair in person. Share with us what that experience was like and what were some of the major noticeable differences between this year's edition of the fair and some of the previous years? Well, it was it's, it was really quite a momentous occasion, I think, um, obviously for the art world, for everybody attending the fair, but also for Dubai itself, even for people that I think don't regularly go to art fairs or are familiar with the art world, because the fair uh, has a new location in DIC, and it's um, it's basically the art galleries now occupy three tents. Um, it looks a little bit like, you know, um, I'd say sort of a smaller freeze. There's only 50 galleries this year, which is down from 90, the usual 90 galleries that that took place in 2019, where it was held um, since 2011. It was held at the Medina Jumeirah um, in, in one of the ballrooms. So it's a, it's quite a different uh, setting and layout, but people are really happy. It's very sort of well organized, well set, um, laid out. You, I mean, there are restrictions. You know, there's a limited number of people that can come into the fair at any at any one time. So you have to book a book an appointment in advance. When you're walking the halls. Um, there is and there is the sort of um, hand sanitizer flasks uh, every few steps <laughs> that people can use, and you know everyone has to wear their mask. If you take your mask down, obviously someone I mean someone comes to remind you to put it up. Um, but uh, in general, there's a really good feeling, a really good vibe. I think people are really really happy to be out and, and viewing and viewing the art. And there's been a lot of sales so far too. From the first day, a lot of a lot of galleries reported um, were very optimistic and. Um, and reported, you know, that sales were swift and steady. Um, on the other hand, the fair is just, um, it's been stripped of its other, you know, special editions um, that, you know, special features, for example, you know, it doesn't, there's no VIP lounge, you know, Runar, the champagne brand uh, has sponsored the fair again, but there is no lounge where you can find people shipping champagne and, and eating, you know, wonderful food. Uh, there's no F&B, there's no media lounge. Um, there, there's not the, you know, regular Art Dubai has this, you know, wonderful expansive program. Um, so it's been replaced with a smaller film, film program, which is uh, really quite great. Um, and then there is a, a sculpture park that sort of features installations that you know, that appear throughout the Dubai International Financial Center. So it is a, a very much a scaled back version of, of what the fair used to be. The people, everybody loves the new location. They feel that it's just really easy to navigate. They feel it's um, very contemporary and, and kind of matches, um, really reflects the, the fair's new, um, yeah, new ethos and DNA. And I think a lot of people are hoping that, that it will stay in this location. Wow. It's great to hear how happy everyone was. And I can only imagine for the visitors and the galleries, what a great feeling it must have been to attend fairs again and see people in person after a year. What was the overall sense of security people felt from a health and safety perspective? Uh, how crowded was the fair? Well, I mean, I, I felt personally, I felt very safe. I've, I've gotten used to Dubai's uh, health and safety measures over the last year. And I, I think that's... Um, you know, I, I think that's echoed by a lot of the, a lot of other visitors. Uh, Gallerists, for example, had to take a PCR test on Sunday, the day before the fair opened. You know, it's VIP opening, and then they have to take another PCR test on Wednesday. So that was the day after the opening. So they actually were really happy about that because it made them feel safe, and it made them feel that they were also being respectful to everyone coming to visit the fair. Um, there is there is obviously a cap of the numbers in each tent. I think I was told. I mean, there's three. There's three tents, three um, sort of tented aisles, and I think, I don't remember the exact number, but it's around, I think, uh, is it 150 or 200 people can be in the space, and that's per certain number of square meters at any one time. So they're very strict on that. I, I you know, I am, um, I mean, I'm a, I'm a journalist, so it's, it was sort of easy for me to come in and out, um, depending on, obviously, who I had to meet, but for other people, uh, they couldn't get, for example, I mean, tickets were really limited, and they couldn't get um they're booking until later in the week. Um, and so that, you know, everyone's been really eager to, to attend this fair. It's really one of the first large scale events that, that the UAE has hosted in, in over a year. And uh, so I think there was generally a feeling of safety. And again, like I, um, I said about the mask wearing, everybody's, you know, wearing their mask, um, being very respectful of that. Um, there are, I mean, generally you feel there's a lot of people in, in, in at the fair. I was, I was quite, yeah, impressed. And I think a lot of people were too, but, 
people are just so happy to be there. I, I just, um, I think there's if some people actually even admitted that they were a bit overwhelmed because I hadn't been around so many people, you know, in, in so long. But there's um, generally, I didn't, I didn't hear one person say that they didn't feel safe. That's really great to hear. I do think some people have anxiety, which is certainly reasonable, about how they may feel in an art fair setting, and I think they're still undecided about if they want to attend a fair this year. So hearing that's really helpful. You mentioned there are 50 galleries from 30-some-odd countries. How eager were galleries to exhibit in this year's fair? And on a related note, I read about a new fee structure that the fair implemented for this year's edition to entice galleries to participate. Can you share the details with us on that? Yeah, and that's been quite um, quite revolutionary. I'm in the midst of wrapping up one of my um, reviews of the fair, and it's never been done before. And this is sort of a 50-50 um, fee structure. So basically, no this year, no gallery has to pay in advance. They have to pay no, you know, usually there's a 50% sort of deposit um, on the booth, but this year they only paid, they only have to pay based on results. So, so for example, Every sale that the galleries make, they have to give Archie by 50% and they keep the other 50%. And that basically um, goes until they cover the cost of the booth. And after the booth is covered, um, any sale that's made goes entirely to the gallery. So it's really, you know, it's really a structure that, you know, supports the, the galleries and, and the community and the art community. And I think that's made everybody feel a lot more relaxed and, and secure. And obviously, you know, Archie by it's been huge to put this together. I was told by the artistic director just yesterday that, you know, they, you know, they went back and forth and back and forth on how to, how to make this work physically. And, you know, it's really come together in just two months. Um, but they, they felt that this payment scheme was, was best for everybody. It's a win-win situation for, for everyone, really. Um, for galleries that paid their 50% advance payment for the 2020 fair, that obviously, you know, that was kind of a big deal for many because they couldn't easily you know, they didn't get that um, that money, they haven't gotten that money back yet. Archie Buys offered them two options. They either apply it to the 2022 fair or they apply it to um, the, the money that they paid, they'll apply it to the booth uh, this year, um, obviously based on, you know, the sales that are made. Um, so it's been, you know, I think people are feeling really comfortable with that. There's also, um, Archie Buys also instituted the remote participation program for galleries that were unable to attend in person due to travel restrictions. And so those galleries were able to send works uh, to display on the site. So the Archie Buy team, in conjunction with the gallery, displayed the works uh, via a, a Zoom coordination and then connected, um, then the gallery would connect with the visitors virtually during the fair and, and the booth would be manned by, you know, someone from Archie Buy. So, so yes, and, you know, if this works well, um, it might stay in the future. I don't, I don't know. But at least for this year to get this moving, um, it's been really important. There are the regular sponsors, you know, Ruinar Champagne Brands. They've, they've sponsored again. So is BMW, a longtime supporter. And there's a new uh, sponsor, um, uh, Salvador Ferragamo. So, and they have a, they have a, all of them have a small sort of booths and, and stands as well. Yeah, I think the fair implemented two really innovative concepts, and the gallery fee one, where the fair takes a percentage of the sales until they receive their fee for the booth, is one that I wonder if more fairs should consider, even outside of COVID. I'm especially thinking about younger or smaller galleries who may find it difficult to pay a booth fee in advance of a fair. This could make it much more affordable for them to participate in more fairs. I know you mentioned sales for this year's edition of the fair were pretty strong, how was the quality of art that exhibitors brought to this year's edition? Was it comparable to past years at Art Dubai, or was it noticeably different? Um, I mean, it is an art fair, and I, I you know, I like all of us, and I've attended many, many art fairs. So, you know, the galleries bring the works that they want to sell. Uh, I think that there was a really good mix of of artwork. Um, you know, what I what I liked a lot is that the the regions, you know, the focus of Art Dubai, which has been uh, focused on, you know, the Middle East, um, South Asia, and, and Africa most recently. Um, all, all of those those regions have been represented. They continue to be represented, and, and then they have been, um, you know, complemented by participation from European galleries and even, you know, first-time participant, you know, Blue Chip Gallery Parotin, which which also um, displayed some works by, you know, big stars like Takeshi Murakami and um, JR. Um, but yes, I think the quality is was very good. Um, you know, some obviously better than others, but in general, I think what was really good is that it's you know it's a commercial enterprise, but it's representing 
uh, it's representing the regions, the regions, um, you know, the crossroads, basically Dubai is a, is a geographic crossroads that has been for, you know, forever, for centuries. And, and I, I think that's why this, this fair is always really crucial. It's sort of right in the midst of, um, it's located strategically between, you know, the Far East, uh, Europe and, and Africa. And, you know, there were regular, a lot of people, a lot of galleries returned, you know, Addis Fine Art from Ethiopia returned for the third time. They brought some really, really rising stars from Ethiopia. Um, so did Gallery 1957 from Accra, which also has a space in London, just like Addis Fine Art. Um, there was Tefessa from London. This is sort of the Africa contingent, um, you know, Middle Eastern galleries, many from, from Dubai that have been longtime, you know, participants, such as Leila Heller Gallery that has a gallery in Dubai and New York. Um, the Third Line, which was one of the first galleries to set up, Isabel van den Eyden, likewise also very, you know, one of the first galleries in Dubai. Um, Neem Gallery. So there's, and they all are exhibiting, you know, really great artists from, from the UAE and from around the greater region. There was also several galleries from Iran. Um, you know, Iran and, and Lebanon also have, you know, they have really strong art themes. Um, Lebanon has, has suffered recently due to the, you know, political and economic situation, obviously the, the explosions, but galleries such as Saleh Barakat Gallery um, came and he actually exhibited a lot more work than, than usual. But I think that's because you know, Dubai, um, Art Dubai is a platform for these galleries in a situation where it's really difficult for people to come in and out of, for example, Iran or Lebanon at the moment or uh, to sell. Um, so this is, I think, you know, there's there's a really good mix of, of, of artists and high quality um, to choose from and also a really good price range as well. You know, there's um, from the, you know, thousands from, I don't know, $2,000, 3000 dollars to in the in the hundreds, if not close to one million, um, price range for people to to choose from. And so, Rebecca, you're really the only person I've spoken to who has attended an art fair in 2021. So I'm curious now that you've attended an art fair in person, and of course I know you're in Dubai, but I wonder if you have a stronger viewpoint on if you think major art fairs in different parts of the world, Europe, U.S., Asia, will be occurring in person this year. I mean, that's that's the question that no one really knows. I, <laughs> I know, that's the question. <laughs> I mean, I've been talking to different people about it. We've been asking each other these questions, and truthfully, none of us really know, and none of us have actually attended a fair this year, And but you have. So I thought I'd ask you, and maybe, I, maybe you have stronger convictions about it now that you've actually successfully visited an art fair in person. Look, I think, you know, like anything in life, it takes, you know, you have to kind of delve into it and, and, you know, do one to get the confidence going and to feel more comfortable. And, um, and I think the fact that Dubai has led the way and they've, they've done this very bravely in a time where it's not easy. It's still not easy for a lot of the galleries to have even, you know, come here. Um, galleries, you know, Dubai is still on the red list for the UK. Um, so galleries coming from London actually have to go via Bahrain or they have to, you know, go other routes to even get back. So the fact that, this was held, I think gives, and it was, and it's been very successful. I haven't heard any negative feedback really. Um, I mean, I, other editions of Art Dubai, especially the 2009 edition, you know, you, you heard some complaints and, you know, wanting to change and spice things up. I haven't heard one complaint this year, but the fact that it's been a success, that there are so many local and international collectors, a lot of international collectors have flown in, I think um, gives, is a really, you know, strong, gives a good sign of hope for, for the rest of the year, for other art fairs and for the bigger ones too, like Art Basel and Freeze. I mean, if, if Dubai has been able to pull this off and maintain uh, all these you know, social distancing restrictions and tests and mask wearing and, and be really vigilant about that, then why why can't um, art fairs around the world do the same thing? And and people need you know people need to socialize. They need to see each other. Uh, they need to see art in person. I think there's a general, um, and I'm sure you'd agree with me. <laughs> general fatigue um zoom fatigue and of, of viewing art virtually it's and people i think were just so ecstatic to have this opportunity so while we don't know what is in store and obviously you know uh there's still a lot of variants in the air and you know there's been challenges with the vaccine um globally i think the fact that this was done and means that there's a great sign you know it's this great sign that more fairs can take place this year 
Absolutely. Just hearing your feedback on how the fair went this year gives me so much optimism about 2021 and the potential for other fairs to take place in other parts of the world. Rebecca, thanks so much again for coming on to the podcast. We really appreciate hearing your insights and your perspective on this unique edition of Art Dubai. It's really exciting to hear everything went so smoothly. If our listeners want to follow you on social and read your articles, where can they find you? Um, well, you, know, you can... I. Like I said, I've I've done several reviews. I've done a review of the fair for for Artnet, for Arab News, and and Ocula. Um, and then I, my Instagram is at Rebecca and Proctor, and I'm also on Twitter, uh, Rebecca A Proctor. <laughs> so yes, I look forward to to connecting with with everyone. And thank you very much for having me. Of course, appreciate it. Thanks so much to Artbase for sponsoring this week's episode of the podcast. Are you managing an art collection, an artist studio, or gallery? Is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level? Well, Artbase is the right software to manage your art business. Artbase lets you track your artworks and contacts in an easy-to-use, powerful database. Enter your data just once and use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and much more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used on the cloud from any location on any device. So what are you waiting for? Go to artbase.com, that's A-R-T-B-A-S-E dot com to learn more, and be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount.